Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing a much requested video. So today we're going to be doing the top five native outfits. So we're going to be going for American Indian outfits of various styles and different types. And uh, it's going to be real cool. And I'm even going to show you the sliders for how to customize your uh, character to look like a pretty cool native character. Uh, one that I've been using for a little while now here. So before we dive on in, I just want to say uh, if you really want to go in depth with this and see the history behind it and just a video that goes into tons and tons of details. Detail. I'm gonna have it linked down in the description and probably also pinned in the comment section. It's Man vs. History's uh, historically accurate native character video. So if you want to check that out, I definitely recommend it. It's got a lot of great information. It goes way into depth on the different types of clothing that each tribe was likely to wear at this time. So uh, with all that in mind, like I said, that video is great and I definitely recommend you check it out after watching this one. But let's uh, let's dive on in and we're gonna start it off with the sliders. So I'll show you how to customize your uh, character to look like the native character that I'm using currently. So let's just jump into that. All right, so this here you can see is the character that I'm going with, and I think you'll agree it looks pretty cool. Definitely fits the theme that I was going for. So let's just go through all the stuff. So first of all, the heritage that I went with is the eighth one, and then for the skin tone on that, I did the darkest one. I went for 25. This this particular build, I think it starts looking cooler and cooler the older you get. I'll just kind of scroll up through it, and you can watch the changes that happen as it goes through. Basically, it just like hardens all of the features, and I think partially makes it look even better. So this build, this character build, build works for any age of native character but like I said I, I was keeping mine down to the younger end so I'm at 25 body build I went with average eye color I did the 13th variant this kind of medium brown one for eyebrows I did short and then everything else is going to be custom so let's go through the sliders and I'll show you where to put everything so you just click on it to customize and so the brow uh, the brow shape I did down here it's between low and wide way down in the bottom corner there for the brow depth I'm over way over to the side in the middle of the shallow section for the eye size I'm you can see I'm down in the small and wide corner for the eye socket, we're up in the tilt inward and deep side over there. For the eye position, we're up kind of towards the center, but we're a little bit higher up towards the up section. So that's the uh, that's the eyes and brows. For the nose, for the size, we're down in the low and wide corner. For the nose shape, we're kind of in the middle, but we're closer to short than long. And for the nose tip, we're going to be down in the down and wide section again. For mouth and lips, for the mouth, uh, we're going to be over in the deep and wide corner. You kind of see where I've got the dot. For mouth position, we're way over towards the down side. For the upper lip shape, we've got, uh, it's in the middle for most of them, but we're closer to wide, so we're going to be way over on the wide side. For lower lip shape, we're going to be way up in the top right corner for thin and wide. For the lips depth, we're going to be down in kind of the bottom left quadrant, so upper lip deep and uh, lower lip deep are kind of going to be the predominant features we're going for there. So that's the mouth and lips. For jaw and chin, we've got the jaw shape way over towards the wide side, but in the middle otherwise. For jaw depth, we're going to be a little bit more to the left for deep, but kind of right in the center of that uh, second square there. For chin shape, it's going to be pretty dang centered, but a little bit closer to narrow and tilt low than tilt high and wide. And for chin depth, we're going to be just right of center, uh, a little bit closer to shallow. For the ears, we're going to be down uh, in the center for rotation inward and outward, but we're going to be closer to long, so you can see I've got it kind of just left of the line down there. And then for ear size, we're going to be down there again, but we're going to be just a box over, so right in the middle, towards the large side, and with large lobe. For the cheeks, we're going to be up on the corner between, uh, you can see where the lines are perpendicular to each other up in the high and wide section. And for the cheap depth, we're, uh, we're going to be way over towards shallow, not all the way on the line, but just left of the line. For teeth, we go with the chompers. Uh, for hair, we'll go into various hairstyles later in the video, uh, so you can go with whatever you want. Uh, and then for lifestyle, we're going to have skin mottling set to uneven, and we're going to go way over to the strong side. For complexion, we're going to be damaged, but we're going to be closer to the faint side, so you can see I'm just to the right side of the line on the second box. Complexion two, we want to go with healthy glow, and we're going to be way over to the right, right in the middle of the last box on the strong side. For freckles, we'll do uh, covered, and we're going to be in the second to right box, closer to the line there. No moles. And for blemishes, we're going to do red-faced, and we're going to be pretty much in the center, a little bit closer to strong. And then for uh, scar, you could do whatever you want. I like the torn scar for this one, kind of suggesting a little bit of battle maybe, or, or maybe you got scratched by an animal or something but we're going to be way over to the strong side on this so we want it to look nice and deep so that's uh that's where the scar is and that is the entire character so like i said i think i i think this one turned out really great i like it a lot and it works really well with basically all the outfits i've got here so if you want to make your character look like a native then that's the way that i like to customize it for this play style so that's the sliders let's move on to the weapons all right and so for weapons it's really nuanced because this uh, this game is set in uh 1898 or 1899 i think it's 90 so 
by this point, weapons would have been very, very diversified for any native peoples, whether they're, you know, living in their tribe, working outside in the world, or maybe in the military or whatever. So weapons really can be almost anything you want. But there are some that work better for the build, in my opinion. So if we're going to go with the, the most fun way to play this build, it's the most traditional style weapons. And so for that, my favorite is the improved bow. So as far as uh, long arm weapons go, uh, the two that you'd most often see just across this time period in photographs for natives would be either the carbine repeater in the game here, it's based on the real-life Spencer repeater. The Litchfield repeater is the real-life Henry, which, again, would have been another military weapon that they could have either gotten in military service or through purchasing surplus weapons. As far as handguns go, it's going to come down to the military stuff, so military surplus weapons that they're buying or stuff that they got in military service is the most common. So the Navy, uh, the Navy revolver would have been decently common. The Cattleman revolver would have been pretty common, so either of those. So this is the Navy here, and the Cattleman being the Colt Single Action Army revolver would have been very common for, these char uh, for a character like this. So really, most weapons work really well, but these ones that I've picked out here, I think, work the best uh, for a roleplay point of view. So that's weapons. Let's move on to the most important part, outfits. All right, so here we have our first outfit, and if you've been a viewer of the channel for a while, you probably recognize this one as the one I did with my melee ability card build. Uh, but it's also one of my favorite outfits to go for if I'm going for that uh, that native look. So uh, let's just go through the items that make this one up. Fo so for the headband, uh, there really is, as far as I know, only one headband in the game, and it's the Zapata headband. And you can purchase this from Madame Nazar. Most colors would work just fine. That's pretty much up to just personal taste. I just use the plain brown one because that's the one I liked the most. So that's headwear. You can see that I left the top open because this would be uh, pretty typical for quite a few tribes, especially during the summer, to not wear any uh, torso covering at all if they're going for the more traditional uh, dress. So again, like I said, Man vs. History breaks down the different types of dress that you'd see amongst various tribes all over the uh, country, but this would have been pretty standard for especially hot weather uh, wear amongst many tribes. So I'm not wearing any shirt, no vest, no neckwear, no coat. So it's all open on the torso. I did choose to uh, use some what they're calling gauntlets here, so these uh, kind of wrist cuff looking things. So we're going to be using the second variant of the bindweed gauntlets, and again, these can be purchased from Madame Nazar. Now for this outfit, I like it looking extremely minimalist so for weapon equipment i went with the rope gun belt obviously most gun belts would work so that's pretty much up to personal taste and in fact uh, most native tribes were pretty well known for wearing very fancy and ornamented belts of various types so it falls through that gun belts would likely follow that pattern but i really like the minimalist style of the gun belt for this design so that's why i go with this one then for the pants we're using the uh, uh plata or plata pants and i'm using this uh light tan variant with the blue cloth hanging down in the front and back. I think these pants are probably the best for most native outfits in the game because unfortunately Rockstar hasn't really added a lot of great clothing for native outfits, uh, but these pants definitely look very nice, especially with this outfit. And then for the footwear, we have these uh, this ninth variant of the Brindill shoes. I think they look very nice, and of course they fit the outfit very well. And that is the entire outfit. I think this, like I said, this one is one of my favorites. I use this one a lot. It looks great. It's definitely more suited for hot weather because you'll get cold very fast, not wearing any clothing on top, but it looks fantastic. All right, so then we have hair and facial hair. So as you can see, we're clean shaven and we do not have any stubble. So that's where the facial hair sits and the facial stubble. I like to use the tied shaved sides and I'm using the dark coloring for that. As far as hair colors go, anything ranging from medium dark brown all the way to black would be decently common to find. Of course, black being probably the most common color, but dark brunette hair colors are the best to go with for this type of character. So here's our second one, and this one is going to be kind of a mashup between the uh, the more westernized dress and the native style, so I like this one a lot. It's a good hybrid. And this one is uh, pretty reminiscent of the Apache outfit, or one of the Apache outfits that Man vs. History shows in his video. So like I said, that's linked in the description, and probably also a pinned comment. Definitely check it out if you want to see a lot more detail on this topic but let's just dive on in and show you the parts for this one so we're going to be starting off with the black woolen hat and of course this is our attempt to try to substitute for the fact that uh, rockstar for some reason has never included any uh bandanas that can be tied on the head or headbands of any sort or at least uh you get what i'm saying any any sort of uh head ties which is pretty common in a lot of these tribes so we're trying to kind of imitate that and the woolen cap or the woolen hat definitely is probably the closest we can come to that style so that's the hat then we're going to be using the red neckerchief the seventh variant of the traditional vest, this uh, darker black striped one. The 23rd variant of the everyday shirt, so this kind of uh, maybe a little bit grayish white version of the shirt. Then we're going to be using the Carthage ring for the left hand ring. For the weapon equipment, we're just going to be using the black bandit gun belt. For the pants, again, we're going to be using the Plata pants, and we're going to be using this kind of white and tan variant, or the white and brown variant. Then for the footwear,
wear the fourth variant of the Chibola boots, uh, these kind of light, medium, dark brown ones. And that is the outfit in its entirety. Like I said, I really like this one. I think it blends the different styles of native clothing together really well and looks pretty realistic for given the time period. So this is likely something that would be pretty common to see. So that is the second outfit. Let's check out the hair quick. And so again, we're not going to be having any uh, facial hair or stubble. And so this is the other one that I really like for native outfits. So that's the long middle parted. And again, we're using the dark black hairstyle. I think these two hairstyles are arguably the best ones for most native outfits. There's a couple other ones that work decently well, but as far as most of these ones go, especially any times you're wearing a hat, the long middle parted is probably the best and helps with the look the most. Uh, so yeah, that's the hair that we go with for this outfit. And here we have outfit number three. So this one we're going to try to do a more traditional one again. Uh, so more of the tribal dress and uh, this one is just one that includes sort of a torso cover. So it's going to be pretty decently similar in style to the first one we did, but with a few small changes. And of course you can change various things about these outfits and they still work rather well, but this is uh, my take on the more traditional one with full torso covering. So we're not going to be wearing a hat or a headband on this one. We're just going to be open headed and we're going to be using the same uh, hairstyle as the first one. So it's that tied uh, shaved sides one. So for the shirt, uh, I think the best option is the Stringham shirt and it's this uh, kind of yellow variant with the black fringe. It's really one of the only shirts in the game that uh, fits with the native style very well. So it's pretty much the only option. For the gun belt, I like going with the kind of yellowish version of the Bulger gun belt. I think it matches the outfit rather well and blends in well enough. So I, I just like how it looks. For the pants, it doesn't really matter what you wear because we're going to be wearing chaps, but I have the Dunster pants on. I think they look decently well, but uh, a lot of them would work perfectly fine just so long as you can wear chaps over them. And for the chaps, we're going to be using the sixth variant of the Elverado chaps just so they kind of match the buckskin look that we're going for. So you can see we've got some uh, fringe tassels on the side. It's got the leather look to it and it matches the Stringham shirt rather well color wise. So that's why we're wearing these chaps. And then for the footwear, the sixth variant of the Brindle shoes. So again, we're going to be just trying to stick with the theme and matching the rest of the clothing very well. And that's uh, this whole outfit. Like I said, uh, this one I really like. It's probably maybe my second favorite out of all the ones on the list because like I said, the first one's probably my favorite. Uh, it's the closest we can come to the traditional buckskin look of a lot of tribes. So this would have been decently common, especially in kind of the central plains and upper northeast. Not, not all the way into the northeast, but of the Central Plains look. So this would have been typical or pretty typical of many tribes in that area. So that's why I like the style. And like I said, I think the outfit looks rather nice. So that's the third outfit that we're gonna be doing. And so here for our fourth outfit, we're gonna be doing another sort of hybrid one. So we're trying to kind of meet it in the middle. So we're using some elements that look a little bit more traditional while also being a little bit more uh, just kind of in the middle road. All right, and so for the hat, we're gonna be going with this uh, red woolen hat, even though it looks kind of pink. I think it's probably the best we can do. So this. This is just to try to substitute for like a red uh, head wrap or bandana or whatever you want to call it, a head scarf. You know, the thing tied around the top that is pretty typical to see in photographs. I wish we had that, but we don't. So this is the closest we can come, but I still think it looks pretty decent. For neckwear, we're going to again be going with the red neckerchief. For shirt, we're going to again be going with the Stringham shirt, this time the uh, kind of black one. And this is really just, I wanted blue, but they don't have a blue Stringham shirt or at least not a dark blue one that matches really well. Uh, but this black one works passably well. And on top of that shirt, we're going to be using the outdoorsman vest, the second variant, this, uh, the second variant, this light tan one. Uh, it's It just helps with the overall look having the light kind of fringe on it and the fringe on the arms from the Stringham shirt. It helps with the overall appeal of it. The picture I was basing it off of had a bit more of a shiny vest, but it was this general color. So uh, I think this vest works the best. For the weapon equipment, we're going to be going with the Thorburn gun belt, and it's uh, this kind of middle bottom variant, the darker brown one. And so with this, like I said, I was trying to capture that uh, sort of tradition of having the more fancy, real nice looking belts that was pretty typical uh, native fashion, I guess you could call it, or tradition. And so this that's where I'm adding in this gun belt. And then just for fun, we're going to be using a gun belt trinket. And the only one I have is the gable charm, but I think it looks rather nice and fits the theme better than the other ones. So that's the uh, the trinket that we'll be using. For the pants, uh, the white variant of the light foot pants, I think work perfectly for this outfit because uh, it had real, real light pants. And these ones have a little bit of extra stitching on them that helps with the kind of feel of it better. And then for the boots, none of the options I could find were absolutely what I'd call perfect. But the high top moccasins, this kind of tan and brown variant, uh, is probably 
the best, and I think they look pretty good with the outfit. And so that is the outfit in its entirety. So for this one, again, we're going to be going with the long middle parted hairstyle again, uh, because it helps frame the outfit a little bit better. Like I said, the only thing that could make this outfit better would be to have that, uh, the actual red head wrap instead of a hat. But I think it still looks pretty good, and that is our fourth outfit, so let's move on to the fifth and final one I'll be showing you today. And so here we have the fifth and final native outfit we're going to be doing today, and I was kind of going for sort of a, well, obviously you could tell it's a military service uh, outfit, so this is one that is maybe from a veteran, uh, maybe a Cherokee scout or something, someone who fought with the army, whether that was, I don't know, even in the Civil War there were examples of it, or later in the Western Indian Wars, so it's entirely possible that this is a veteran of any of those conflicts, and I think it looks rather nice and blends the uh, the themes together rather well for the, you know, the varying outfits. So uh, let's just go through the items that make this one up. So we're starting off with the Union cap, and we're going to be using the dark blue variant uh, because it's a Union outfit, or a sort of Union-ish looking outfit, uh, U.S. cavalry really. But anyway, uh, I wish this is the one instance where I wish we had a little, slightly more beat up variant to the hat because it would match the rest of the outfit better, but either way, this hat is the best option. And then we're going to be using a neckerchief, and you can really go either way. I found that amongst the photographs and descriptions I was able to find that red was more common for neckerchiefs worn by natives, but that being said, if we're going for that military or the cavalry theme, then the yellow neckerchief could possibly work better since that's the color that cavalry was associated with. So either way, red or yellow, uh, I went with the red just because I think it looks a little bit better and is a little bit more traditional, but the yellow works rather well for the cav cavalry theme. So uh, either way, uh, a neckerchief is the way to go. Then for the coat, we have the blue military jacket. I like the worn out style. I just wish it was a little bit darker, but as is, it still looks really nice. Then for the shirt, the kind of either real light gray or dirty white variant, the color over shirt is uh, the one that I like the best for this outfit. For the gun belt, we're going to be using this middle bottom uh, variant of the Goodman gun belt, so this brown one. And we're actually going to be using a bandolier because the photo I based this off of, it didn't really have a bandolier with a bunch of bullets on it, but it did have a thick leather strap going across the chest. I don't know if that was holding a rifle or something on, but I couldn't see a weapon on his back. Either you could wear this bandolier, and if if you do choose a bandolier, like I said, the Farnholm bandolier, this first variant, is the one that I recommend. But if you don't want to do a bandolier, then uh, just make sure you've got a long arm weapon strapped on your back so you have that strap going across your chest. And for the pants, we have the ninth variant of the buckskin pants. I think they look rather nice. They match the blue theme for the sort of uniform. And also the buckskin pants are pretty decent options for most uh, native outfits. So it's kind of a fun little blend there that works on both levels. Then for the footwear, we have the brindle shoes and I went with this first variant. And that is the full outfit. Like I said, I like all of these outfits a lot. I think they all look great. I love the, the character that I've got created here. I think it's excellent and very versatile. You just make it older, give it slightly lighter hair. It works really good for older uh, native characters. But all of these outfits are great and I hope you enjoyed them. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.